Well, my very first government job, uh, I got hired right out of graduate school to go to work for the Office of Management and Budget in their National Security Division. Uh, so I was the examiner for a whole bunch of random collection of Department of Defense uh, programs, uh, including such things as the Defense Acquisition University and the Defense Legal Services Agency. So all the things that you hand to a junior analyst that they can't do much damage to. Um, I think the thing that I learned the most from that uh, initial position was really both the, the value that analysis and really good, sharp, uh, cogent analysis can bring to problem solving, but also its limits. Um, the limits of how analysis has to fit into a broader context uh, in a city like Washington, D.C., where policy and politics also play a role um, and really coming to understand how uh, analysis has a very key role, but it's not the only, uh, it's not the only thing, uh, it's not the only part of the uh, decision matrix. I think one of the skills that I learned very early on uh, at OMB was how to break a really complex problem down into its constituent parts and really distill and focus on the issues that senior decision makers would need to understand in order to make a decision. When you work at OMB and you deal with the very senior policy officials there, they have such broad scope uh, of spans of responsibility. They don't have the time or the ability to get way down into the details. So you really have to be able to distill the key elements they really need to focus on. And learning how to do that and come to a, uh, an issue that you, that you yourself don't know a whole lot about initially, get up the learning curve very quickly and figure out how to break that issue down into the parts that the uh, senior decision makers really need to know about, that's a very key skill. And I've used it over and over and over again, even continuing into my current position. Well, I would say that uh, one of the key things is that uh, there are actually a lot of resources out there already in the federal government. Um, I've always found that um, people are very willing to take time. Current employees are very willing to take time to talk to uh, junior staff and uh, talk to them about how to get things done, how to break down projects, how to bring uh, the skills that they've seen uh, used before, how to look back and understand what the history of issues has been so that um, maybe you can learn from how previous, uh, previous attempts to implement something have gone so that you can learn lessons from that. Um, I think there are definitely ways and resources that are available to help um, break down the, and, and break into its component parts and lay out a, a program plan and a specific action plan to uh, deal with the projects that you're working on in a way that'll help make them seem less overwhelming. So I wish I had like a, you know, a really pithy, good, you know, always check your sources or something that uh, would uh, work in there. But I think actually really uh, two things. One is um, I learned very early on um, to ask questions. If something doesn't seem like it makes sense, it might not. Um, and if you're willing to be the one that is uh, asked questions, you'll usually find that most of the other people are equally as confused uh, as you are. Um, and that it's a matter of being willing to actually ask the, the questions. Um, and the second one of which is to, um, is to observe. Um, watch how other people run meetings. Figure out whether or not you actually think it was good or bad. Um, and it, it's almost sometimes as valuable to see uh, some really bad examples as it is to see the really good ones. Um, but be observant. Observe how the other people around you interact with um, in, the, in an interagency environment and how do you actually get things done. Um, what are the methods that you use to uh, get ideas into circulation in a way that people actually um, will accept them more readily. Um, and if you are an observer and you observe how people do that, you can actually learn an awful lot. Well, I think that uh, those colleagues are probably first and foremost. The, 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 the reservoir of experience is, is really, really deep. Um, but I also think that, you know, the uh, people that work in the private sector that have uh, spent time in the federal government um, that bring sort of that perspective of having worked in both worlds are, um, are very valuable. Um, and I think that uh, that's mainly the, it's those people resources that are the really important ones because those are the really hard problems. The, the technical resources are always there. Um, but it's really, I think, sort of uh, really learning from 
learning from your colleagues, both those that are uh, in similar situations and those that have been through a few of the same things before, what's most valuable? Well, I think that there's actually a couple of reasons, one of which is I think that a lot of the issues and a lot of what the federal government works on, the, the issues themselves are actually really quite exciting. Um, they cover an enormous area, um, an enormous array of activities um, that are really quite fascinating when you actually think about all the different things that the federal government does. Um, two, I think that working for the federal government brings a very unique perspective and it allows you to develop a way of looking at the world and a way of thinking about problems um, that is really quite unique. And it's a, it's a perspective that will serve almost anyone well in their career, whether or not they stay in the federal government, move to state government, move to the private sector, work in an international NGO, um, cycle back into the federal government uh, during their career. Um, all of those are useful. That's a perspective that will serve you well, uh, almost no matter where you go, because it provides an understanding of how the federal government gets its work done, why it operates the way that it does, which sometimes from the outside looks a little crazy, um, but there's usually a logic to it. You can disagree with it, but there's almost always a logic to it and a reason behind it. And understanding that, uh, I think, is actually invaluable for figuring out how to actually um, get the federal government to operate or and also to figure out where you think it might need to change. Um, and you, I think you really have to understand it from, uh, from the inside. 